and welcome to Peter's Crew Online. It's a little bit strange this, isn't it? All you being at home and me being here. It's a very strange time that we're living in. But I'm hoping we can do our best to do Peter's Crew as normally as possible. One good thing that you'll all be pleased about is I can't do the register and we don't have to play a name game because I don't know who's there. So hopefully you won't miss that. It also means it's rather difficult for us to play many games at all, but I've got a few that I think we can try from home. The first thing to remind you about today, the 22nd of March, is it's Mother's Day. So it's a bit late, if you've forgotten that, for me to be telling you now, but hopefully you haven't forgotten it, and it's never too late to um, show your mums, or the people that love you like a mum, and to say thank you. So it's never too late for that. Maybe this week you could make the odd extra cup of tea or just give the odd extra smile or cuddle. Okay, so that's to remind you, Mother's Day. So, today we are looking at our series on living like a Christian and we're thinking about what did the cross mean and why did Jesus have to die? So the first thing I want us to do is play a game and this is the best I could do, okay? This is called the how much game. How much does it cost? And I've taken the prices listed here of six items from the Argos catalogue. Now, the only one I could find was winter 2019. So they may be slightly out of date. I apologise for that. So what I'd like you to do at home is jot down these prices. So £699.99, £549.99, £150.00. £70, £50, £25. Right, I am going to read out some items from the Argos catalogue and you are going to guess which one matches which price. Are you ready? Let's play. Do -do -do -do, do -do -do -do. How much did that cost? So our first item is a 12 foot trampoline with enclosure and ladder. That's for the garden. A 12 foot trampoline with enclosure and ladder. How much do you think that would cost? Mm -mm. I'll tell you what, to help you remember what we're doing, I'm going to write here. 12 foot trampoline. And in a minute we'll match it with the price. Okay. Right, how about a leather sofa? Now we're all stuck at home, we need a good place to sit. So how much would a leather sofa cost us on here? Which one do you think that is? And then how about, also stuck at home, a Nerf gun. This is no ordinary Nerf gun. This is a motorised blasting Fortnite Nerf gun. Mm -hmm. How much? How much do you think a Nerf gun would cost? Especially if it was a Fortnite motorised blasting one. You decide which one is the Nerf gun. And now, also stuck at home having to watch a lot of TV. How about a new TV? A curved screen 49 inch TV. Mm. Curved screen 49 inch TV. How much? Now, maybe a Nerf gun's not your thing. It's not my thing. Maybe you prefer a Sylvanian family red roof country house. It's quite the thing. It's a beautiful doll's house for your Sylvanian little people. So how much would that cost you? A Sylvanian red roof country house. Sylvanian, Sylvanian, oh I can't spell that, house. And finally, the game of Pictionary. If you're going to be stuck in with the family, you might as well play a game. So a game of Pictionary, the boxed board game. Which one of those? How much would that cost you? Right, how are you doing? Have you managed to match each of those things to a price? How much did it cost? If you haven't managed to match them, you could pause here and do a quick matching because I'm now going to reveal the answers. I'm going to tell you how much each one was. Okay, so 
The top and most expensive item on the list. Do 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 do. What did you think? It was the leather sofa. So the leather sofa was six hundred and ninety nine pounds ninety nine. How about that? The next most expensive item on our list was it the trampoline? Mmm, that's a big trampoline. No, it was the TV. The curved TV, 49 inches, came in at £549. Okay. And the next most expensive thing on our list at £150, that was the trampoline for the garden. Bit of exercise while self-isolating. Mm, not a bad plan. And then, next on our list at £70, that was the Sylvanian Country House. Quite expensive. £50, that was the Nerf... Oops. The Nerf gun with motorised blasting, which leaves Pictionary a real bargain at £25. How did you do? Did anybody get six out of six? I wonder. So we're going to think about how much things cost. Now, that's just objects. I wonder what price would you put on a whole person? Imagine that. How much do you think a person is worth? Mm -hmm. Now, I had to think about this because I used to be a chemistry teacher and I thought, what's a person made of? Right, now, I've got the answer here. A person is made of as much fat or soap ingredients as it would take to make seven bars of soap, okay? I don't know about you, I'm enjoying this dove soap at the moment. It's got a little dove on it. This is beginning to sound like an advert, isn't it? But that little dove, when I wash my hands, makes me think about the Holy Spirit and being protected by the Holy Spirit. Anyway, seven bars of soap is the equivalent of a person. Uh, enough iron to make one nail goes into a person. Seven cups of sugar. <laughs> enough phosphorus, as you would find in 2,200 match heads. That's quite a lot. Six buckets of water, I've not got those here. Enough sulphur to um, rid a dog of fleas. Ooh. And enough magnesium, well, five tablespoons of magnesium. So if you had to buy all of those things to make a person, how much would that cost? Well, it would only cost about seven pounds. So the raw ingredients of making a human being, seven pounds. Obviously, we're much more than that because we need life breathed into us and we need to be a whole living person. And only God can do that. And in God's eyes, we are so precious, so very precious. Now, we're talking about the cross and why Jesus had to die on the cross. And that's a tough thing. And I don't like to think about Jesus on a cross. It makes me really quite sad. In fact, I have been known to cry when I think about it. So I thought, rather than us watch a bit of video of Jesus on a cross or think too much about him dying, I would read from one of my favourite books. So this is The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. Now, as you know, in The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, the lion, Aslan, represents Jesus. And he does die. And I'm going to read you his um, death scene, if you like. Um, I can't show you it on video because that breaks too many copyrights. So I'm going to read it. And while I'm reading it, you could perhaps close your eyes and imagine the pictures for yourself. And think about just what Aslan is giving up here. And how he does that. How he willingly gives himself up. How Jesus willingly gives himself up. And what kind of death it is. Because it's not a pleasant death and it's a very public way of dying. So here we go. The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. Aslan, dear Aslan, said Lucy, what is wrong? Can't you tell us, are you ill, dear Aslan, asked Susan. No, said Aslan, but I am sad and lonely. Lay your hands on my mane so that I can feel you are there and let us walk a while like that. So the girls did what they would never have dared to do without his permission, but what they had longed to do ever since they first saw him. They buried their cold hands in the beautiful sea of fur and stroked it, and in so doing, they walked with him. And presently they saw that they were going with him to the slope of the hill on which the stone at table stood. They went up to the side where the trees came furthest up, and when they got to the last tree, 
It was the one that had some bushes around it. Aslan stopped and said, Children, children, here you must stop. And whatever happens, do not let yourselves be seen. Farewell. Both the girls cried bitterly, though they hardly knew why. And they clung to the lion and they kissed his mane and his nose and his paws and his great sad eyes. Then he turned from them and walked out to the top of the hill. And Lucy and Susan crouched in the bushes looking after him. And this is what they saw. A great crowd of people were standing all around the stone table. And though the moon was shining, many of them were carrying torches which burned with evil looking red flame and black smoke. But what people? Ogres with monstrous teeth, wolves and bull-headed men, spirits of evil trees and poisonous plants and all creatures that I couldn't describe because if I did, the grown-ups would not let you read this book. There were cruels and hags and incubuses, riots and horrors and efrits, sprites and orkneys and woozies and ettins. In fact, there were all those who were on the witch's side and whom the wolf had summoned at her command. And right in the middle, standing by the table, was the witch herself. A howl and a gibber of dismay went up from the creatures when they saw the great lion pacing towards them. And for a moment, even the witch seemed to be struck with fear. Then she recovered herself and gave a wild, fierce laugh. The fool, she cried, the fool has come. Bind him fast. Lucy and Susan held their breaths and they waited for Aslan's roar, for him to spring upon his enemies, but it did not come. Four hags grinning and leering, they're also at first hanging back and half afraid of what they had to do, approached him. Bind him, I say, repeated the white witch. The hags made a dart at him and shrieked with triumph when they found he made no resistance at all. Then others, evil dwarfs and apes, rushed in to help them and between them they rolled the huge lion over on his back and tied all his four paws together, shouting and cheering as if they had done something brave. Though, the lion had been chosen. One of his paws, if he had chosen, would have been death to all of them. But he made no noise. Even when the enemy strained and tugged and pulled at the cords, they pulled it so tight that it cut into his flesh and they began to drag him towards the ta stone table. Stop, said the witch, let him first be shaved. Another roar of mean laughter went up from the followers as an ogre with a pair of shears came forward and squatted down by Aslan's head, snippity snip, and when the shears and masses of gold and curls fell to the ground. Then the ogre stood back and the children watched from their hiding place, and they could see the face of Aslan looking small and different without its mane, and the enemies also saw the difference. Why, he's only a great cat after all, cried one. That's what we were afraid of, said another. And they surged around Aslan, jeering at him, saying things like, Pussy, pussy, poor little pussy, how many mice have you caught today? Cat, would you like a saucer of milk? How can they do that? said Lucy, tears streaming down her tree cheeks. The brutes, the brutes. For now, the first shock was over the shorn face of Aslan. But he looked braver to her and more beautiful and more patient than ever. Muzzle him, said the witch. And even now, as they worked about his face, putting on the muzzle, one bite from his jaws would have cost two or three of them their hands. But he never moved. And this seemed to enrage the rabble all the more. Everyone was at him now. Those who had been afraid to come near, even after he was bound, began to find courage. And for a few minutes, the two girls could not even see him, so thickly was he surrounded by the whole crowd of creatures, kicking, hitting, spitting and jeering at him. And at last the rabble had had enough. They began to drag his bound and muzzled lion to the stone table, some pulling, some pushing. He was so huge that even when they got him there, it took all the efforts to hoist him onto the surface. There was more tying and tightening of cords. The cowards, the cowards! sobbed Susan. Are they still afraid of him even now? When once Aslan had been tied, and tied so that he was a real mess and mass of cord on the flat stone, a hush fell on the crowd. The witch bared her arms and she bared them the previous night when Edmund had been there instead of Aslan. And then she wept the knife 
and it looked to the children when the gleam of the torchlight fell on it, as if the knife were made of stone and not steel. It was a strange and evil shape. As she drew near, she stood by Aslan's head. Her face was walking and twitching with passion, but it looked up at the sky, still quiet, neither angry or afraid, but a little sad. And then, just before she gave the blow, she stooped down and said, And now who has won, fool? Did you think, by this, you would save the human traitor? Now I will kill you instead of him, as our pact was, so that the deep magic can be appeased. But when you are dead, what will prevent me from killing him also? And who will take him out of my hand then? Understand that you have given me Narnia forever. You have lost your own life. You have not saved his. And in that knowledge, despair and die. The children did not see the actual moment of the killing. They could not bear to look. They covered their eyes. So that was the death of Aslan. And it's a parable of the death of Jesus. And it was horrible. It was a death that was unjust, it was a death that was in public, it involved mocking, and it was a painful way to die. But Aslan, like Jesus, did that willingly. He did that willingly because it was his father's will. And although the witch thought she'd won, we know she hadn't. Here's the bit, three days later. At that moment, they heard from behind them a loud noise, a great cracking, a deafening noise, as if a giant had broken a giant's plate. What's that? said Lucy, clutching Susan's arm. I, I feel too afraid to turn round, said Susan. Something awful has happened. They're doing something worse to him, says Lucy. Come. And she turned and she pulled Susan round with her. The rising of the sun had made everything look different. All the colours and the shadows were changed. And for a moment, they didn't see the important thing. And then they did. The stone table was broken in two, two pieces by a great crack that ran down from end to end. And there was no Aslan! Oh! 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 cried the two girls, rushing back to the table. Oh no, it's too bad, said Sob Lucy. They might have left his body. Who's done this? cried Susan. What does it mean? Is it magic? Yes, said a great voice from behind them. It is magic. They looked around and there, shining in the sunrise, larger than they had seen before, Shaking his mane, for it had apparently grown again, stood Aslan himself. Oh, Aslan, cried both the children, staring up at him, almost as much frightened as they were glad. Aren't you dead then, dear Aslan, said Lucy. Not now, said Aslan. You're not, not. Uh, uh, Susan, in a shaky voice, couldn't bring herself to say the word ghost. Aslan stooped his golden head and licked her forehead. The warmth of his breath and a rich sort of smell that seemed to hang about his hair came all over her. Do I look like I am? Oh no, you're real, you're real. Oh, Aslan, cried Lucy, and both girls flung themselves about him and covered him with kisses. But what does it mean, asked Susan, when they were somewhat calmer. It means, said Aslan, that although the witch knew some deep magic, there is a deeper magic still which she did not know. Her knowledge goes back only to the dawn of time, but had she looked further back into the stillness and darkness of before time dawned, she would have read, a different story. She would have known that when a willing victim, who had committed no treachery, was killed in a traitor's stead, the table would crack and death itself would start working backwards. And now, oh yes, said Lucy, jumping up and clapping her hands, we have a long journey to go on and you must ride on my back. He crouched, crouched down and the children climbed onto his warm golden back. Susan sat holding his hand, holding on tightly to his mane and Lucy sat behind holding tightly to Susan, and with a great heave he rose, and off they shot, faster than a horse, down hill and thick forest. And they went on a wonderful ride. And then we meet the last battle, which is all about, perhaps, the new heaven and the new earth. So, what's that all about then? Jesus had to die. He had to die for two reasons. He had to die as a sacrifice for our sins, not his own, our sins, to make us clean in the eyes of God and to give us a way back to God, a way to heaven. It might be a long journey, 
but he has gone ahead of us and made that possible. So, we've got one other thing to try to bring that little bit alive. Alfie and I have made a little tiny animation with some play people. It would be a drama if we had more people to do it. And perhaps next week um, we could get a few people together to do a drama for this video. Um, if we've got some people that aren't ill and aren't self-isolating, we'll look at doing that. But let's have a little look at that drama now. Welcome to the headmaster's office. Tim and Dave were being called to the head of master's office once again. Right, so would one of you like to explain to me exactly what happened? He started it. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. You threw a pencil case at me. Yeah, well, you called me an idiot. You are an idiot. That's enough. You two ended up fighting on the floor in front of all your classmates. Mrs Phillips was most upset. Why? You almost knocked her over. Yeah, well, he started it. You two seem to spend more time in my office than you do in the classrooms of this school. Is there a reason why you both behave so badly? I don't misbehave as much as him. Yes, you do. You're much worse than me. That's enough. A school is a place for learning. Do you not understand that? Yes, sir. Tim? Yes, sir. So why don't you both try behaving instead of misbehaving? Don't you want to learn? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So why don't you both try behaving instead of misbehaving? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, is there anything else you want to say? What are you going to do to us? What do you think you would do if you were in my position? Resign? Yeah, and buy some better clothes. And so it carries on. You boys just don't seem to care, do you? You have caused more trouble in this school than anyone else in all of its history. How would you know? What? How would you know? You haven't been here for the school's history, sir. Yeah. You re you're really old, but I don't think you're over 100, are you? So little respect. Is there anything else you want to say? What's our punishment going to be? What do you think your punishment should be? We should be given the day off of school to think about all the things we have done wrong. Yeah, and we should be forced to eat a burger and chips over a period of half an hour. A day off school and your favourite food? Do you think that is punishment and do you think it fits the crime? Crime? That's a bit steep. No, you two have hurt many people in your lifetimes at this school. You wrecked the cafeteria. That fire was an accident. You sabotaged the school play twice. Fire extinguishers could go off at any time. And fire alarms. You've made so many people's lives a misery. There is only one punishment that fits the wrongs you have done. What? You don't mean... Yes, you are both expelled. From now on, your life at this school is terminated and you are no longer wanted. What? You... My mum will kill me. No! My mum will kill me! I'm sorry to have to be seen, but I need to be seen as a just head teacher and you both deserve to be terminated. Don't keep saying that. Sandra, can you send Jessie in, please? Jessie? Right, Tim and Dave, I don't know if you've ever met Jesse. He is the, in the year above you and he is my son. Oh, right. I didn't know you had a son. Yes, and this is him. Yeah. I've heard of him. A bit of a goody two shoes from what, I, that, from what I understand. Now, you boys have a choice. You are both deserving of being expelled from this school. I want to speak to my mum. This has got to be some sort of unfair dismissal or something. 
nearly burning down the school twice, I think it's a very fair punishment. So you can, can be terminated from this school with immediate effect. Or, I am willing to save you from that punishment. Brilliant! How? By terminating my son in your place. What? If you agree and accept my son, he will take the punishment for you. I don't think I'm following all this. But he's not done anything wrong. He's never been in any trouble, ever. From what I understand, why don't you want to be terminated your own son when you deserve the punishment? I want him terminated to save you two. You're willing to have your son take our punishment instead of us? Yes. If you agree and apologise for what you've done wrong. Absolutely. Sorry. I'm really sorry. Yeah, me too. I'm sorry. And you accept my son and completely agree to taking, for him taking your punishment? Yes, absolutely. You don't have it, right? You are free to go, but make sure you apologise to Mrs Phillips and the boys. You promise to stay out of trouble from now on. We'll do our best. Yeah, actually, uh, Mr Barker, don't expel your son. Don't terminate him. Why not just suspend him for a few days? So... I wonder what you make of that drama. Do you think that Tim and Dave should have had the punishment they got? Or do you think that Jesse deserved it? Do you think Tim and Dave will actually amend their ways now? <gasps> so this drama is about how God treats us because of Jesus. Our verse of the week, for which I've got some colouring on the website, is John 3:16, which sums up what we have been talking about. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So because God gave Jesus, gave him up to die and rise again, we who believe shall not perish, but can join him in eternal life in heaven. So I thought, what can we do um, at home before next time as a response to today's story? And there are two things that I would like you to do. One of them is some colouring, which you can download from the website. Let me just pick it up. I've left it over here. Here we go. There's two to choose. There's John 3.16, which is a lovely picture of the world with a heart as well, reminding us that God has the whole world in his hands and loves us hugely. We need reminding of that at the moment because it feels like the world is a bit fragile. But God has it in his big hands. He's in control. And the other one is similar. It is a cross across the world. And the verse is written around the edge. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So you can get someone to download those for you from the website. And you can colour them in. And perhaps it might be nice to stick them in a window where people who are walking by get to see them and get that message too. Or you could take a picture of it coloured in with you, perhaps, and send it in so that we can use it in next week's video. And the other thing that I thought might be quite good fun was the thing about a cross, is it's a really simple feature. And it's features all over the place, in our architecture, in our buildings, in our windows, all around your house. So I thought you could go on a cross hunt. So wander around your house and look for a cross. And if you find one, anywhere at all, take a picture of it. Or you might want to make one with some food or some craft or some Lego. And send me a picture of all the crosses, or some of the crosses, that you have been able to find at home. And next week, we'll make a little montage um, of crosses we have found. So, to finish, I'm going to pray for all of us. Heavenly Father, Please be very close to us at this time. Fill our houses with knowledge of how much you love us. And help us remember that Jesus died for all of us so that we might not have to take the punishment. We might be clean in your eyes and so that we can go to heaven and have eternal life. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 
for that. Amen. So, God bless you all, and I shall see you next week, perhaps with a few of you to help. Bye.